So I had a project that I wanted done and Scott is the um, one that does the heavy machinery in our house. So he decided to do the um, wood cutting for me, or actually I asked him if he would. And here he is taping up the wood because he wants to have a clean cut and he doesn't want any splinters or anything like that on the board. This is a one by six piece of poplar and he's getting his um, table saw all ready to go to make the cut. So here he is, he's, he's making the cut. He's basically just rounding, not rounding, but he's cutting off the ends to even everything up and to make everything square because lumber you get from the lumber yard is not usually perfectly square. So he made that cut and he's going to tape and cut the other end. And um, we'll be back when he's ready to do the next cut. He's just using inexpensive painter's tape. Um, he likes to use that because it comes off clean. And um, it's just an extra step that you didn't, wouldn't have to do, but he likes to do because uh, we didn't want to waste this piece of wood. We bought it specifically for this project and we just want to make sure that um, everything turned out well. So he's measuring again, measure twice, cut once. That's the rule when you're working with wood. And here he is making the second cut. So here he is taping the ends of the trim. Um, this was a pretty expensive piece of trim, uh, but I really liked it because of the um, design on it. And this will be the sides of the tray. So he's being very careful and cautious to tape it up well and so that he um, doesn't waste any wood. We had it figured out that uh, we would have a little bit of extra. We'd have room to make one mistake and still have enough trim to do the project. And fortunately, he didn't make any mistakes. So we had plenty of trim. But here, again, um, he just wants to make sure that everything turns out well. And here you can see the design on the wood. Here Scott is measuring the pieces of trim that he cut. He obviously cut four pieces, two long pieces, two short pieces, and he wanted to make sure that they were all exactly the same length. So he is um, taping two of the end pieces together and he's going to just trim off the, uh, the extra and so they are exactly the same length. So here he is measuring the side pieces and the end pieces against the bottom to make sure that everything is square and fits pro uh, properly. Um, he, he doesn't claims he's not a woodworker and he really doesn't enjoy working with wood but I think he did a really good job on this um, although he ended up getting very upset because things weren't exactly perfectly square but you know that's what happens when you're working with wood and um, it, it's just a different animal in, in and of itself but I really like the rustic look I like how it turned out and even though he's a perfectionist and wasn't overly happy with it I was very happy with the end result. And here is Scott is um, sanding the edges of the trim and the base and I ended up joining him and helping him sand it down a little bit. It was just to smooth off the edges and um, make it look more finished. So here he is, he's putting some caulk on as just a type of glue. Uh, we didn't have any wood glue, so he's just made do with what we had. So he was putting a thin bead of caulk down and then smoothing it out with his finger. And now I'm helping him hold the piece on while he um, makes sure everything is nice and straight. And he uses his nail gun to put in the uh, small nails to hold the pieces together. 
and he will continue this process on all four sides. All right, so now I'm going to whitewash the, the um, tray, and I'm using multi-surface um, acrylic, and it's in the color Atlantis. And the way you whitewash is you take acrylic paint and you mix it with water. And you're supposed to go about half and half. So I've got you know, maybe a couple tablespoons of water in this cup. And so I'm just going to add some paint to it. And I'm going to mix her up. I think I'm going to use a smaller sponge brush. And I'm going to test it on the bottom of the tray just in case I, you know, want to change it, make it less paint and more water or whatever. And so I'm just going to put it on here. Yeah, I think it needs a little more water. You can also um, take a dry sponge brush and dab the extra off, which that looks pretty good. But I do think that might be a little bit darker than I wanted, so I'm going to add a little more water. And since this is the bottom of the tray, it's not going to matter. I can just keep um, trying it out till I get to, to the right shade. And the idea with the whitewash is that you kind of want to be able to see the wood through it. Yeah, I like that. That looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and finish whitewashing the bottom of this tray. And then when it's all dry, I'll be back and I'll show you how I do the other side. Okay, so while the back, the bottom of it's drying, I'm going to go ahead and do both ends and one side, and it's just the same, the same process. And you also want to go in the same direction. Now, the side of the um, tray has a design in it, and Olivia is going to be my dry brusher so that I can continue. Uh, painting and not stop. So you want to kind of get into all the little crevices of the design. But you don't want it to be super thick. Like I said, you want the wood to peek through the wood color. And I'll mention that the bottom of the tray is made out of poplar. And the trim, honestly, I don't know what wood it is. I'm assuming it's oak. Not oak, it's not right. Pine. Oak is very expensive. <laughs> and this was this was not a not a cheap piece of trim, but it wasn't a really expensive piece of trim either.
last thing I'm going to do to it is I'm going to line the bottom with this sunflower burlap. And the only problem is, is it's just a tiny bit too wide. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it to length and then I'm going to trim, trim it off so that it fits into the tray nicely. you guys my completed tray for my coffee station in my house so it, I have Scott's coffee pot and my coffee pot and then we've got all the fixins for coffee and I just put this mug here because the colors match perfectly and I think it looks really nice I got the inspiration for the color scheme from my window ledge I took the colors from the vases and whitewashed the tray and then the burlap has sunflowers on it and I took that from these sunflowers. So everything ties together. And then up above in this cabinet is where we have our coffee and all of our tea and all of our other fixings for making coffee. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how you can DIY your own tray. You can make these trays anyhow, any way you want to. It's limited only to your imagination. Thanks a lot for watching friends and we'll talk to you later. Bye! And as you can tell with this video I was trying something new with voiceover. Um, I know I need more practice at it to get better at it, but I just wanted to keep my videos interesting, so this is something new that I added. I will do these kind of videos from time to time. Thanks a lot for watching, friends, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye!